compute the following Riemann sum. First, our function is going to be f of x equal to x minus 1 squared minus 1. We're going to be over the interval from 1 to 3. We're going to use 10 rectangles with equal length base. And to get the height of our rectangles, we're going to use right endpoints. So first, let's draw our picture. Now, our function is going to be a parabola facing up. So we draw that in. We're interested in the interval going from 1 to 3. So we mark those off. Okay, our endpoints are 1 and 3. I want 10 rectangles. The length of my interval is going to be 2, 3 minus 1. So I'll divide that by 10. Our delta x is going to be 0.2. So it's going to be the length of any base. Now, to get the height of the rectangles, we use the right endpoints. So the idea here is we have to figure out our partition, and then we'll take a look at the endpoints. So we start at 1, and then I'm just going to keep adding delta x until we get to 3. So we'll have 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, all the way up through 3. Now, if I'm going to use the value of our right endpoint to give us the height of the rectangle, which could be negative, then that's going to mean when I figure out its value, that's where we draw the height of the rectangle in. So that's going to touch the graph of our function. Okay, you can see that that happens here. So we check each right endpoint, hits the graph. Okay, so note here, some of these heights are going to be negative. That just means we'll get out signed area when we do our calculations. Now, what are we going to do here? Well, I'm going to need each right endpoint. So note, if I take a look at what's happening, we're not going to use 1. We're going to start at 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. Then we go all the way out till we get to 3. So that's going to give me 10 points that we compute values off of. So right now, we get into the area of just bookkeeping. So all of our right endpoints, we start at 1.2, go all the way down to 3 move our way down by adding a 0.2, which is our delta x. Go to a calculator, put each of these numbers into our function. So we work them out. Then to get the area of your rectangle, which may be signed area, we're just going to take these numbers, multiply by our delta x, which is a 0.2. Then to get our Riemann sum, we're just going to sum this column. When I do that, what comes out is going to be a 1.08. So you'll notice, if you look at your picture, 1.08 is going to be an overestimate. When we have our region between 2 and 3, the rectangle is going to be above our graph. So we know we're using too much area when we're between 2 and 3. If we're between 1 and 2, these are going to be negative. But you'll note our rectangles are inside the graph which is going to mean we're not using enough negative area. So not having enough negative means you have too much positive. So we're definitely doing an overestimate here. Now, let's redo the problem with n rectangles. First, we'll recalculate delta x, the length of each base. So the length of our interval is going to be 2, 3 minus 1. We divide by n, we get 2 over n. To find the heights, we're going to take our function, apply it to each right endpoint. Now, to get those, we have to figure out our partition. So, we're going to start with 1, and we're going to repeatedly add our delta x until we get to 3. So, we'll have 1, 1 plus 2 over n, 1 plus 2 over n times 2, 1 plus 2 over n times 3, and so on until we get to 3. Now, you'll note the multiple of 2 over n that I use for each right endpoint is just going to be the number that goes with your rectangle. So for the first rectangle, we use a multiple of 1. Second rectangle, I use a multiple of 2, and so on. So for the ith rectangle, the right endpoint is going to be 1 plus 2 over n times i. Now, we apply f to get our height with a sign on it, possibly. So what are we going to do? Subtract 1 square it, and then subtract 1 again. So we get 4 times i squared over n squared minus 1. Now, 
to get the signed area, we multiply by delta x. So I'm gonna get 8i squared over n cubed minus two over n. Then we wanna take the sum as i goes from one to n. So it's taking the sum of the area of each rectangle. Now, we get that to purely equation form. So it's gonna be the sum as i goes from one to n of 8i squared over n cubed minus two over n. And then we can go look things up to figure out the number there. Now, our summation rules say we could split this into two sums, and then we could factor out any constants. So for here, I could factor out eight over n cubed. Note n cubed is not a variable. There's no i in it. N is just gonna be some fixed number. Then in our second part, I could factor out two over n. Then I'm left with the sum as i goes from one to n of one. That just says add one to itself n times. So we're gonna get an n there. Now for the sum as i goes from one to n of i squared, I look that up. That's n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. So now we can start reducing this. Now over here, we just have a minus two because we have an n over n. Over here, I'm gonna lump each term in the numerator with one n from the denominator. So n over n goes away. We have n plus one over n, and then we have two n plus one over n times eight over six, and then minus a two. So that's gonna be the Riemann sum for when we have n rectangles. Now, if we let n get large without bound, okay, this term's a one. This term is gonna to go to one as we let n go to infinity. This term here is gonna to go to two. So if I let n go to infinity, meaning we let the base of our rectangles get thinner and thinner and thinner, we're gonna have 8 thirds minus two or a 2 thirds. So you'll note our answer on the previous board of 1.08 is in fact an overestimate of the actual answer. Now, we'll see later on that we could check our answer or you could work out two Riemann sums and take the limit, okay, going from one to two and two to three. The answers that you'll get will be here on the part that's underneath the x-axis, we get a minus two thirds. For the part that's above the x-axis, we get a four thirds and then you can see if we let the part beneath cancel with some of the part that's above, we get the two thirds that we have here.